GMTK Game Jam 2022 was massive. More than 22,000 people signed up to the jam, and within 48 hours, they had bashed together more than 6,000 games. That makes it, once again, our biggest jam yet. But it also had, perhaps, the most challenging theme to date. Participants had to design their game around the phrase, Roll of the Dice. And so our brave designers had to come up with games about randomness, probability, and rolling numbered polygons. But I should never doubt these devs. These games are clever and creative, inventive and imaginative, fun and fiercely unique. After players spent a week rating games, I tried out the top 100 rated games, and then chose my 20 favourites. So, without further ado, and in no particular order, these are the best games of the GMTK Game Jam for 2022. One of the main challenges of this jam was wrangling with randomness. If the outcome of the game is completely driven by the roll of the dice, that can rob the player of agency and reduces the importance of strategy. So, a popular solution was to let players design their own dice. You're still at the mercy of RNG, but hey, you're the one who chose the numbers. This is my favourite example of the idea. Rolling for Royalty The game is a series of simple turn-based battles, fought with dice rolls. And in between each bout, your dice are unfolded, and you can swap out the faces. Do you want lots of attacks? More shields? Perhaps a spell? A modifier? Or money that can be spent on even more faces? Then the game adds a further tactical layer. After each roll, you can choose to re-roll some of your dice. Now, we're adding a sense of risk and reward. Is it better to just keep that weak attack, or will you risk rolling it again for something better? I had a good time with this game and enjoyed the charming, untextured 3D art. I could definitely see the idea expanded further into a full role-playing game. There's always some good, neon-lit, high-tempo, score-chasing arcade thrills in the GMTK Game Jam. This year, the best one was Die Pound. You play as a die and can click the mouse to ground pound nearby enemies. The dicey twist is that when you land, you get a new number, which dictates how far away you'll land when you do the next jump. So you could be left with a tiny one pip hop or a massive six pip leap that sends you over to the other side of the screen. I think it might be fun to have a combo system that only ticks up if you kill an enemy with your leap. That way you can't just get rid of your rubbish one pip jumps in favour of something better, but are forced to get up close and personal with baddies. But that's just me backseat designing. What's here is fast, fun and addictive. Give it a shot. Perhaps the most common theme in the jam was puzzle games where you roll a dice on a grid. Whether that's to spell letters, climb structures or play rock paper scissors. There are some really clever ones that had me thinking, but my favourite of the bunch was Roll of the Dice. In this elegant isometric game, your die acts like a stamp, leaving an imprint of its bottommost face whenever you roll on these white paper tiles. To finish the level, you must shift and shimmy around so you can paint the tiles to match this map in the bottom left corner. The puzzles are well made, often just teeny tiny grids that are way harder than they initially seem. You'll have to think carefully about how to spin your die without spoiling the stamps you've already placed down. And the game has a simple solution to a problem faced by a lot of these games, which is you can't always see what's on the other side of the dice. Sure, opposite sides always add up to seven, but who wants to figure that out? So Roll of the Dice uses its camera to always show you three sides, and then with a press of the button, you can see icons for the other three. The game's pretty simple, but I think this would be a great base to construct an enjoyable puzzle gem. Randomancer is a highly polished tower defense game where your fortifications are provided at the roll of a dice. Like Plants vs Zombies, you need to plop down towers to fend off enemies who march along lanes. But instead of choosing them from a list, you must roll a handful of dice. So whether you get a powerful cannon, a handy shield, or a bomb is down to chance. After each wave, you get to add another die to your collection. 
That alone would make for a fun game, but Random Answer has a spicy little twist that adds a lot of fun and charm. You see, when you lob these dice into the arena, they are big, heavy, physical objects, which means you can lob them at enemies to do damage. This adds an extra layer of strategy. You don't want to throw all of your dice immediately, after all, and a layer of knockabout physics fun. I'm just left wondering, instead of rolling the dice and then manually positioning the tower that appears, would the game be more fun if the towers just popped up wherever the dice land? It would be slightly less tactical, but when you're playing with randomness, it's often fun to just lean hard into the chaos. Another common theme in the jam was twin stick shooters where you physically throw a big old die at your enemies. I think my favorite of the bunch was this one, Gimiko. The juice in this one is just right. It feels fab to hike this hefty cube at zombie enemies. And the game has a nice ebb and flow. You've got plenty of power when you're chucking the die, but then you're completely powerless as you dodge and weave through baddies in order to pick the die back up again. Of course, there's more to it than that. In between rounds, you spend your cash in a shop to add special powers to your die. Now, every time you throw it, it lands on a random number and plays the corresponding power. Maybe shooting out bullets, or launching missiles, or spawning mines, or dropping out bees. You can also buy more dice and fill them with powers to create an arsenal of magic blocks. I'm not sure there's too much strategy involved. I found myself just throwing dice as often as possible and hoping for good effects, but I still had a blast with a game that is manic, silly, and a lot of fun. Not Your Pawn is another die lobbing game, but with a completely different feel. Once again, we throw a giant die at enemies, this time chess pieces, and every time the die lands, it rolls to a random number. This is important to keep track of because each enemy is weak to a certain type of number. Some will only take damage if the die is odd when it's thrown, or even, or above or below a certain number. Where Gimiko is mad and chaotic, Not Your Pawn is slow, strategic, and thoughtful. I like both vibes, so it was impossible to choose just one. In terms of feedback, I'd perhaps recommend making the numbers a bit more readable. They're small and hard to pass, which artificially increases the difficulty. I wonder if there's a way to represent these rules in a way that could be understood at a glance. Here's a fun one a twin-stick shooter where time stops between each move. Your character, a die with arms, can roll in any direction, but the distance is dictated by the random number you roll. When you finish your roll, you'll fire out bullets. As long as you have ammo, that is. You get more by rolling into enemies. This simple setup leads to a tense game of cat and mouse, of steam-rolling baddies and chaining together moves. Later, you'll be able to upgrade your powers, and then the game adds enemies who don't care that time is supposed to be stood still, forcing you to stop being so analytical and start playing on instinct instead. I like this one a lot, and kind of like John Wick Hex, it captures the quick decision-making of fast-paced combat without needing to be superhuman yourself. It's always interesting to see different ways of doing RPG battles. Sometimes an RPG even borrows from other games and genres for its fights, like how Undertale turns into a bullet hell shmup, or Puzzle Quest borrows from Bejeweled. So, it was fun to play Dice of Fate. This is a game that uses PopCap's Peggle as inspiration for its fight scenes. On each turn, you place down pins on this giant pachinko board. The blue ones are yours, denoting attacks, defense, and heal. The red ones are the same, but for the baddies. You then drop dice into the board, and each bounce against a pin changes the final actions of the battle. There's a great big dollop of randomness, but getting to design the board lets you have some control over the outcome. Like Peggle, the game is pretty simple and largely devoid of skill, but also, like Peggle, it's addictive and engrossing. I could definitely see this idea expanded further in the future. There's always something fun about games where you just break stuff, just completely throw off the balance. I don't know, it's just a joy. That's why I liked Dice is the Way. It's a pretty simple card-battling RPG with funky graphics and goofy audio. But see those numbers in the balloon font, like your health points, your enemy's next attack, or the cost of your card? Well, you can pick one of those numbers and randomly roll a new one, perhaps swapping your enemy's 80 health points for just two, or making one of your cards impossibly expensive. 
I'm not sure how well this game holds up to scrutiny. I would often get a bad roll and ruin my entire game, but I'm not expecting anyone to tightly balance a game in one weekend. Besides, I had just as much fun seeing how silly things could get. A die doesn't have to be random. As always with the GMTK Game Jam, the theme is just a starting point. How you interpret it is up to you. That's what leads to great titles like Burb Hike. This is a game that uses the unique patterns on a die to create interesting puzzles. So these snowy tiles have igloos dotted about like dice pips. When you walk off the edge of the tile, the die counts down by one, changing the layout of the igloos. You can keep going until the tile is removed entirely. This can lead to some brilliant spatial reasoning puzzles, like this one that I got totally stuck on during a live stream. Sorry about that, but that was a little infuriating. Later, the game introduces palm trees, which count up instead of down, and volcanoes, which bounce between two numbers, and then puzzles that combine them all. This is just a great game and a wonderful example of how it's important to think outside the box when it comes to fitting the theme. Next up is Fire and Dice. This is a charming action puzzle game about defending your dragon from attack. Each turn, the dragon throws out a bunch of dice. The color indicates the attack pattern, and the number determines the power. Your job is to place the dice on the grid in such a way that they'll do the maximum damage to a bunch of incoming peasants and soldiers. So it's part tower defense, part number crunching puzzle game, and it looks great too. My only suggestion? Add a timer. It's too easy to spend ages rearranging the dice back and forth, looking for the perfect solution to do maximum damage. But analysis paralysis ain't fun. I had a better time when I played loosey goosey and took turns as quick as possible. You could probably add other types of dice too, like ones that push enemies into other lanes. So I think there's more to explore here, but nonetheless, I thought this was really clever, elegant, and is well worth a shot. One of the more creative twists on the theme was using a die as a level or world. Take, for example, Rolling World. It's a room-by-room -room puzzle game about pushing boxes and hitting switches, but the rooms all exist on the sides of a die, so go out a door and the whole world twists around. This is important because depending how you leave the room, the entire world can spin on its side or upside down. And because elements in this game, like these big heavy doors, are affected by gravity, the orientation of the world can open new pathways. So it's a tricky, brain-busting Zelda dungeon-style spatial reasoning puzzle that will have you really thinking about this world as a complete, contiguous space. It's a little tricky to get your head around. I think Holomony does a better job of explaining itself by virtue of being in 3D and using transparent textures. But Rolling World's puzzles just eke it out for the top spot for me. Next up is a game that comes from a team filled with previous GMTK Game Jam winners. But you can see why they're winners. They just know how to squeeze the most out of an idea in 48 hours. Introducing Die Munition. This is a frantic shooter platformer where the level is made up of falling dice. You'll need to jump between these tumbling blocks to stay above the acid. But that's not all. The number on the dice also indicates how many bullets you can shoot while stood on that block. And once you spend them all, the block will disappear. And so because your ammunition is intricately tied to your ability to stay afloat, it really makes you think hard about every move, every jump, and every bullet fired, all while frantically bouncing about and blasting away at enemies. It's just a great arcade thrill ride, which really proves the skill of these designers. Give this one a go after the video ends. In this jam, we saw a lot of games where you do dungeon crawling battles by rolling your dice into foes. Like, a lot of them. But I think, ultimately, I prefer this take on the idea. Maces and Dices is a game where, each turn, you get a bunch of different dice that relate to actions, like moving, attacking, and jumping. So you might randomly roll the ability to move down, up, down, and attack. Then you've got to use those powers to move through the dungeons and attack enemies. You need to be very thoughtful because once your dice are done, it's time for the enemy to move. Sometimes it's best to get to safety if that's all your roll will allow. So it makes for tense, tactical, and puzzle-like battles. And for an extra twist, the dice are also your health bar. Take too much damage, and the dice will break, giving you fewer options in the next tussle, unless you make your way to another die and give yourself more moves. Clever stuff. 
Dice are supposed to be random, right? There's no way to influence the outcome? Well, there was a bunch of games in the jam that played with the idea of fudging rolls or rigging dice. I think my favourite though was Jimmy Blitz and the Rocket Dice. In this one, you use a very subtle method to make the dice land how you want. Rockets. That's right, each die is equipped with rocket-powered speed boosters, which let you decide where the die lands and how it rolls. Also, you can meet criteria like landing a 4 or getting better than a 3. Okay, maybe not so subtle, but you'll still have to be careful not to twig the attention of the dealer. Spin too much and you'll go from safe to sus, and then get a game over if you're detected. Later levels have you swapping between dice or landing in super specific zones. It's all done with funny voice acting and a charming CCTV style visual effect. Some jam games just put a smile on my face, and this was one of them. Another ultra popular theme was you do random actions, perhaps every time you roll, or every time you reload your gun. That can lead to a pretty chaotic game, but in terms of pure chaos, it's this one. Oddwood. In this game, your actions change every time you fire. Sometimes you're shooting a single bullet, or a spread of shotgun fire, or doing a dash move. Oh, and also, you're spinning around in circles. It's absolute mayhem, especially as the arena is tiny and the enemies come in thick and fast. But it's somehow still completely playable. You've got a nice powerful dodge, generous health, and regular new upgrades. That makes this ultra polished game just super playable and ultra compelling. I had to force myself to put it down so I could make this video. Here's a really creative puzzle game. The screen is split into two halves. On one, you've got a side-scrolling puzzler about pushing, pulling, and rolling a die around to weigh down switches and get up to higher platforms. But you better be careful because your little friend is inside the die and gravity changes every time it rolls. You wouldn't want to send your pal into a spiky trap, would you? And so thus begins a bunch of puzzles where both characters need to collect a star to win the level, but actions in one can dramatically affect the other. It's a clever and original idea for a puzzle game, with endless ways to explore and expand on the core concept. There's always one game in the jam that basically looks and plays like a finished game. This year, that honour goes to Dice with Carly. This is a super polished, but also ultra engaging puzzle game about placing down dice while following specific rules. Adjacent dice must be either the same colour or the same value. Things start off easy, but you can quickly get yourself tangled up in spots where you need a very specific die to fill a gap. And because you have to use all of the randomly provided dice each turn, you're sometimes forced to put yourself in a tricky position. So it's a game about thinking ahead, putting out fires before they get too big, and resigning yourself to be eaten by the goddess of death, Carly, who kind of looks like a Muppet. That would have been a weird Sesame Street episode. Here's a really odd one. Where They Fall is a game about being a seer. You know, someone who can, apparently, commune with the gods and turn their cryptic riddles into messages for kings and leaders. So at the start of the game, you tip a bunch of dice, coloured stones with special runes on them, onto a map. Then a mysterious figure asks you questions. You need to divine an answer by looking at the runes, where they fall, which way up they lie, and so on. A book, to your left, helps you figure things out. Now, this is not easy. The book is as cryptic as the gods' messages, and I was never 100% sure that I was giving the right advice, and not just a bunch of nonsense. But perhaps that's the point. Communing with the gods isn't an exact uh, science, and the game does a good job of capturing that mood, just squinting at coloured rocks and using that to decide if we should go to battle. Imagine how you'll feel if the soldiers don't come back alive. This is a creative take on the theme and makes for an immersive experience. I'd like to see where this might go with some more time. Finally, would it be the GMTK Game Jam if there wasn't a platformer with a unique twist? Of course not. So meet Roll the Die. In this one, you play as a square. You can run around and jump like any other platforming hero. But you can also spin in 90 degree chunks. With this, you can paint each of your four sides with coloured paint. Sticky paint, that is. Touch your blue side to a blue wall and you'll stick to it like Spider-Man, allowing you to jump off to a greater height. 
Eventually, you'll have all sorts of different colors, and so we'll need to twist and spin to keep up with the level design. This creates a really unique game where you're simultaneously positioning yourself for a safe jump and rotating your body to match the color. It's a rub your tummy and pat your head challenge that will have your head spinning and your fingers just completely confused. But when you get to grips with it, it's a real joy to play. Give it a go. So that's my top 20, but as always, some honorable mentions. Roll to Hit On is an RPG where you flirt with your teammates, leading to different buffs and nerfs. Diced Coffee is a manic plate-spinning shop simulator about making coffee from dice. And Design by Committee is a game where pesky producers keep changing the game's design while you're playing it. There's loads, loads more. You can play all 6,000 games over on itch.io. And you can also see the public's rankings for all of the games. Have a play through the top 100 and see if you agree or disagree with my picks. Thank you so much to everyone who took part in the jam, or just rated some games, or chatted with us on Discord, or watched my streams. Thanks to my mods on Discord and YouTube, and to everyone who made our awesome TeamFinder app. An extra huge thank you to my patrons. Remember that GMTK Game Jam has no corporate sponsors. It's all funded by viewers like you. The Jam will be back in 2023, so subscribe to the channel to receive the date announcement sometime next year. Thanks. Bye.